What do you think? Okay, some people look at this and go, oh, it's dirt and scrub and, and just squalor. But to me, Baja Mexico is, is very special to my heart all my life. It's where I chose to retire to and it's where I'm gonna be half the year for the rest of my life if I can help it. World-class windsurfing, kiteboarding, uh, incredible photo opportunities of the desert, of the ocean, uh, and the uh, Sea of Cortez. How beautiful is this? Welcome to Rich Baum's YouTube channel, Tips and Tricks for Real Estate Photography, where we talk about all things real estate photography related. And today, I'm going to talk about a simple little technique I want to really get some clarification on. Maybe not simple for some people, but simple to me because I understand the concept and it's all about concepts. Before I do that, I want to say please subscribe to the Rich Baum YouTube channel. Please use that Adorama affiliate link. Adorama is my sponsor. Thank you, Adorama. We're going to be doing some great stuff for 2020. And I just want to say welcome everybody. Check out Shooting Spaces. Anyway, I don't want to go into too much promo. I want to get more into what I want to talk about. And this year I'm going to be doing some shorter videos, like five minute videos, 10 minute videos maybe, but I want to really keep it brief and do more content. So that's my goal this year. Um, I want to say welcome to 2021. Oh my gosh. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be better than 2020, but we will see. We will we'll absolutely see. And those of you from around the world, I'm wishing you uh, health and wealth and, and, and just prosperity and, and mostly health. Because as you can see, I've got my uh, mask here. I'm not wearing it because I'm socially distant. But um, I am I'm certainly, I feel better being here in uh, my little town in La Ventana, Baja, Mexico, than I do being in California. And I'm going to California in about four days. So I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm looking forward to getting back to my clients and taking care of my business. Because uh, if I'm not there, they may find somebody else. They will find somebody else. And I'm coming out of paradise, my paradise, to, uh, to be there for my clients. And I would assume you would do the same thing too. Anyway, um, the thing I want to talk to you today is one of the biggest misnomers and the biggest misunderstandings. And, and I am guilty for um, starting that. And I will take full responsibility for it. It's called the window pull. Uh, I'll discuss it in a minute, what it is, what, it, what we do it for, but it's also doing the window pull in darken mode. Now I have a lot of videos um, on the YouTube channel. If you look up, uh, do a search for videos uh, on uh, darken mode, uh, darken mode, um, uh, the uh, window pull in darken mode, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Now, the concept is really very basic and simple and makes a lot of sense, but to a lot of people it's cons it's confusing and you don't really understand what we're doing here. They don't know that you've got to do it absolutely by the book, each number by number, get everything right or it won't work. It just won't work because it's a concept and it's a Photoshop technique and unless you do certain things, it just won't work. Now, if you have a lot of problems with them, you can go through all of my videos that I have. I must have six or seven videos on the window pull and darken mode alone. But that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is we don't want to do a window pull. A window pull is when you, to me, is when you take a separate image. Now this may be different to some people, but for me, and what works for me is, a window pull is when I want to expose for the window. And in the past, I would take a photo, um, an exposure of the proper window exposure, and then I would pen tool, or I'd use the polygonal tool, or, or I would select the window, and I would paste or mask in the uh, window view. And that would be great, but it took a lot of time. So for me, um, I learned this from, uh, from Peter Lyons, my great buddy who told me this, and it was literally life-changing. It just changed the way I did things, the concept. And I remember pulling into my driveway and we're on the phone and, I, and I, he's telling me that I can do this and do that for the window pull in darken mode. And I don't have to, it just comes in. I just have to mask it in. I don't have to select the window. And it was great. And I use it all the time, but I don't use it all the time. I use it a lot. I don't use it all the time by any means. So my point is the goal is more of a basic photography technique. And that goal is expose your room for the view you want or expose for the brightest thing in the scene, which could be the window. It could be a light. It could be several things, but expose for that. Cause we're shooting in manual. 
expose for that brightest thing you want, then dial your, because the we have three things, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Well, we're not going to change the aperture because we're shooting composites. We don't change the aperture. We could change the ISO, but I set my ISO now at ISO 500. Okay, well, it's another, it's a discussion for another time and an argument for another time. So let's not go there. But the thing we adjust is our shutter speed. So when we're shooting the room, let's say you have a simple bedroom and I urge every one of you to go to a bedroom in your house and set up your tripod in the doorway, shoot a corner shot with a window, maybe a ceiling fan, whatever, and a bed. Everybody has this house in their own, has this room in their own house. So you don't need to do anything fancy, you can practice at home. But what I want you to do is I want you to on your, take your ambient shot, which is over, overall exposure, but you know, the window's gonna be blown and everything like that. But then do your flash exposure and expose for the brightest thing in the room, which might be the window. Expose for the window, raise your shutter speed up. It might have to be 180th, 125th, 160th, 150th. Just expose for that. But remember, uh, you gotta understand about max sync speed, but I don't wanna go there in this video. I wanna keep this really simple and to the point. So expose for the window, which means your room is all of a sudden now gonna be very dark. So what you do, you use a flash to light it up. And all you need in a small bedroom, as we all have a, a eight foot ceiling, six, seven foot ceiling, and an eight by 10 room, all you need is a speed light. And I keep one in a pouch on my tripod and I raise it up and I take the speed light and I'll put it on uh, in a very bright room. I might put it on for a small bedroom, but a bright bedroom with a bright window, I might put it on a, a quarter power or half power. Speed light is all you need. You don't need a two, three, four, five, six hundred. You don't need that for a small room like that. But that's another story again. <laughs> so try and expose then. Set your shutter speed and put your flash straight up. In my opinion, I like going straight up about 18 inches from the ceiling and uh, it makes a nice soft bounce off the ceiling. And then get that, get that exposure correct. And therefore, you're going to not have to do a window shot because it's already exposed. Now, when you're using a mirrorless camera, it helps because you can see what you're changing as you're changing your shutter speed. You can see the changes. But you can also get that with live view in, in DSLRs. So it is possible to do, that, to do that too. I personally tether, so I don't have a problem with that. I look at my iPad, I adjust my shutter speed up or down to get the right exposure for the window. Then I flash my, my I pop my flash, and I might have to do it a few times at different uh, positions or at different strengths but I then get a single exposure where I could actually deliver that, but I like bringing in the ambient exposure so I can have shadows and goodness, the ambient goodness, and also help with ceiling fan reflections. I mask them out with the ambient. So there are other videos on my YouTube channel, and I'll be doing more this year of let the ambient do the heavy lifting and how to hide, how to fix ceiling fan shadows, things like that. But simply remember, we don't, the whole point of this little video is we don't need to um, do a separate window exposure. It is not the goal. I never do windows exposures unless I need them. And 80% and of the houses I shoot, I may not do a window pull, window pull where I'm doing a separate window exposure in darkened mode or just a wind, you know, window pull. But I always do darkened mode because it just it makes sense. It's magic. But, um, I'm just saying that you don't need that. And a lot of people think you need to do a window pull shot every time. So you need an ambient shot, a flash shot, and a window shot. No, 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 no. Ambient shot, flash shot, walk away. Sometimes I don't even do an ambient shot because I've gotten pretty good anyway. So listen, I just hope that made sense to you. If it didn't, leave comments. I answer all my comments uh, for you and uh, I'll get back to you. I also offer private coaching. If it's really, you know what, I'm not saying anybody needs coaching, but if you're really having a hard time and a lot of people have a hard time with darken mode, it just doesn't work, it just doesn't work. Well, you're not doing one thing right. You gotta have your computer settings right in Photoshop and you will see everything in my video is right on, but you just need to stop it and really look. But sometimes it's hard and you're intimidated. So contact me at rich at richbaum dot com. Okay, that's my, that's my uh, email address. Put in their coaching in the subject line. But this is not to sell you coaching. This is to give you the confidence that you can do it yourself without help. Because 
if I can do it, you can do it. It ain't brain surgery, right? Okay. So listen, thank you so much. Please use that affiliate link, Adorama affiliate link. It helps me make these free tutorials from Baja, Mexico, and who knows where else. Be sure to check out Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast, where Brian Berkowitz and I have a, a weekly talk show. We, we don't do it all year, but we do it about six, eight months a year. And we talk about all kinds of things, interviews, you name it. Shooting Spaces. Uh, shootingspacespodcast.com and we have our website which is shootingspaces.net where we have my presets we have uh, webinars we have all kinds of great stuff so check that out and be sure to use Adorama my sponsor I want to thank Adorama for the sponsorship we got some great deals coming up in 2021 and I'm really going to be excited to put those out there and new gear there's a bunch of new lights coming out from Adorama and I'm excited to try them littler lights like the the 100. Everybody knows, I hope everybody knows, the new uh, e uh, Explore 300 is my favorite new light, but I'm still using the 200 and a speed light and a 400 and a 600 and a 360. A lot of lights. I keep them in my car, but I only now just pull out the 300 and a speed light, and that's all I need for 90 plus percent of my houses. So anyway, check it out. And again, thank you for joining me. Be sure to subscribe and um, leave your comment in the comments section and I will return it. Thank you so much. Happy 2020. I am so stoked if I said that last year and you know what happened, but it's not my fault. But I really know that we're going to have a better year next year. So listen, or this year, 2021. I can't believe it. Thanks a lot for joining me on the Rich Baum YouTube channel from beautiful La Ventana, Mexico.